He's a billionaire jet setter who's hobnobbed with some of the world's most powerful people, influential playmakers like Bill Clinton, Donald Trump, and Prince Andrew. But there's a good chance you've never even heard his name. Epstein, I mean, this guy is worth a fortune. He's traveling in high society, friends in high places. Yeah, absolutely. Jeffrey Epstein, an uber-wealthy financier who made a name for himself mingling among the most elite and moneyed circles of Palm Beach, Florida's upper crust. Now, James Patterson, one of the most prolific authors of all time, is spilling lurid details about the man to Crime Watch Daily, from his explosive new expose, Filthy Rich. This guy had everything going for him in terms of things he could do in the world. For, 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 for better or worse. And for worse is where this story takes a very dark turn indeed, because the man who has in the past categorized his business as, quote, investing in people, can now add this distinction to his portfolio, convicted pedophile. This 63-year-old allegedly has an insatiable sexual appetite for girls young enough to be his granddaughter. Jeffrey Epstein arrested for being a pedophile. Yes. You say underage girls. How young are we talking about? 13, 14, 15. At least 40 of them. Yes. Arrested for having some kind of sexual relations of some sort of, of uh, touching, feeling, and whatever with 40 girls. Here's how cops say it all went down. The teenagers were approached by Epstein's recruiters, stalking their schools, luring the girls in, for the boss's perverse pleasure. He had people who would go out and find the girls for him. Now, they were careful. They would tell the girls, you know, Jeffrey shouldn't know how old you are. So he, I guess, tried to immunize himself uh, in, in that way. The teens were told they could make easy cash, up to 300 bucks for going to Epstein's sprawling estate, where they would give the billionaire a massage. Did the girls have very similar stories? Yes. Recruited in some, some way, shape, or form. It tended to be, you know, middle class or lower middle class, needed the money, uh, not the most sophisticated girls in the world. According to the girls, once they were in the master bedroom, Epstein would greet them wearing only a towel, then drop the towel and lay nude on the massage table. The gig had cash incentives. The happier the ending, the more money they'll make. They go upstairs and the rest to give a massage and then it just gets more and more salacious. And according to reports, Epstein wasn't exactly shy about his preferences. Often seen out and about at places like Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago, with young girls he would call his nieces. Patterson says when Trump got wind of the prowling perv, he banned Epstein from the property. You wrote that Donald Trump's instincts regarding Epstein were solid. Elaborate if you can. Well, with respect to, to, to Trump, um, when he found out that there had been some accusations that, that Epstein was inappropriate at Mar-a-Lago, Trump said, I don't, want you, I don't want you around here. But when it came to his twisted fantasies, Epstein had plenty of other places to go to. All just a quick trip away aboard his private Boeing 727, dubbed the Lolita Express. Tell me about the Lolita Express. He has an island uh, not far from Florida, and uh, he would get down there frequently, had a, a private plane, and he would bring girls. Uh, and some of them, according to the pilots and every people on the island, certainly looked to be quite young. The plane was allegedly used to transport the teens to Epstein's private Caribbean island, Little St. James in the U.S. Virgin Islands where they would reportedly participate in sex parties. It was also called the island, uh, Orgy Island. I'm sure it had a lot of names. Orgy Island, yes, yeah. Uh. According to passenger manifests, Epstein's private plane even hosted former president Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton traveled on Epstein's air airplane several times. You know, we, we were aware of 11, but we never heard anything that implicated Clinton in any kind of, you know, improper behavior. But that wasn't Epstein's only famous connection. Here he is strolling casually through New York Central Park with Prince Andrew, who was reportedly a frequent guest at Epstein's parties. For his part, Prince Andrew has denied any inappropriate contact with the young women also seen at those parties. 
As for Epstein, eventually Girl started speaking out, and with up to 40 identified victims, a federal criminal case was brought against him, one that quickly crumbled. The feds had a 53 count indictment ready to go on Epstein, 53 counts. And how many counts did they settle for? It was one or two. In the end, Epstein was convicted only of a single charge of soliciting an underage girl. He was sentenced to 18 months in a Palm Beach jail, but got out after 13 months and was even allowed to leave six days out of every week for work release, a cushy deal brokered by his dream team lawyers, including Alan Dershowitz, who famously represented O.J. Simpson, and Kenneth Starr, who prosecuted Bill Clinton. The big surprise for everybody is somehow this guy gets a 13-month sentence for one girl, and he's allowed to go home every day. The car comes and picks him up early in the morning and, and returns him to the prison at like 6 o'clock. So he's out all day. As part of the deal, Epstein did have to register as a level 3 sex offender, a classification that rules him, quote, a threat to public safety. Today, it seems Epstein is keeping a lower profile, staying far away from his Palm Beach mansion, spending his time instead at his Virgin Island retreat, still sitting on a reported $2 billion in wealth, and now living as a convicted pedophile. This is a story about privilege and the abuse of privilege. I mean, he could do anything he wanted to do, and he chose the dark side.